today's deck and jump to the front of the line thanks to today's patron. Priority deck requests are one of the many perks you get by becoming a patron. Consider supporting the channel today. Welcome back to today's build. I'll be your guide to this wonderful game we all love. Let's get started. Today's deck is a celebration. His name is Bilbo, birthday celebrant, and this is your invited. Hang around to the end of the video to learn more about a giveaway. Bilbo is a 2-3 rogue in all three life gain colors, finally, that ups our life gain by one, and can tap to spew all our creatures in the deck onto the field, inviting them to the birthday party. Just like how Omnath adding three mana incentivizes us to find cards with exactly mana value three, since Bilbo's first ability only increases life gain by one, we'll want to pack the deck with cards that provide as many instances as possible of gaining exactly one life, since Bilbo essentially doubles those. As a quick reminder, that does not include single instances of gaining life for each of something, but it does count creatures with life gain as different life gain sources. Since Bilbo's second ability cares specifically about creatures, those are the cards that we want to be building the deck with most, and we'll assign bonus points for cards with higher mana values, since Bilbo's getting the most value on our most expensive creatures. Lastly, a key interaction everyone building this deck should be aware of is what I'm calling the Aetherflux effect. After playing against enough Aloro decks, I've noticed that one of the conversations that often takes place around the table is one that inevitably convinces the rest of the table that you're an imminent threat, and in fact you are. Life gain strategies have historically been very weak, for reasons I'll probably go into in a future patron video, but despite this, the consensus at the table will be that your life total needs to be managed, like mowing a lawn or trimming the hedges. It costs each opponent very little to send one attacker your way each turn to try to keep you below 50, just in case you draw that Aether Flux. And the payoff for not being under threat of imminent laser beam is well worth it, so we want to include ways of deterring or offsetting those attacks. Claret Class and Boon Reflection both amplify our life gain, but neither of them gain any life on their own, and neither are creatures. Compare this to a card like Rock's Faithmender, which is a creature, has lifelink on its own, and combines with Bilbo to quadruple our life gain. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. Suture Priest, Elas, and Sanguine Bond are either doing the wrong thing or not doing enough. We're not really looking for life gain payoffs here as much as we are life gain sources. Remember, Bilbo doesn't gain any life himself, Bilbo is the payoff. And when we do go looking for other payoffs, it needs to be on a much larger scale than this. Belladros is really top-heavy, and even though it might look like it does thing the turn that comes down, it really doesn't. Its triggered ability makes creatures that have to die for us to get those life gain triggers, and this isn't an Aristocrats deck. And its activated ability is actively impeding us from activating Bilbo's. Instead, we'll be playing Wolverine Riders, who will generate the same bodies, but the life gain is immediate. And am I the only person who thinks Birds of Paradise is really unnecessary here? Dina is really nuanced. On the one hand, it doesn't gain us any life, it's a life gain payoff, and not one that we especially care about. There are two upsides to Dina though. The first is that she hits each opponent, whereas Vito hits a single opponent. The second, of course, is that both combo with exquisite blood to win the game. Maybe there's a world where we use Dina to machine gun life drain our opponents into oblivion. But for me, the biggest downside to her is that she's not a source of life gain herself, and Vito is. When you put combos in the deck, as often as possible, they should be cards that are naturally included, and you'd want to run anyway even if they are not comboing off, and Vito fills that role much better than Dina does. So what's our timeline? Turn 1, we'll play, well, the really obvious plays. Essence Warden, Soul Warden, Soul's Attendant, and so on, to generate as many instances of gaining one life as possible while also being creatures, both from our creatures and our opponents. We're also playing Spectrum Sentinel and Authority of the Consoles this turn for the same reasons, and Authority can help slow down any would-be attackers in addition to gaining us life. Turn 2 will play Oriok Champion, Daxos Blessed by the Sun, and Archivist of Ogma for more life gain sources as well as some much needed card draw. We can also play Ashes of the Abhorrent, Blood Artist, and Power Leech to set up even more life gain triggers for the future. Turn 3 will play Bilbo and start the party. Turn 4, our best play is Call to the Feast. This represents three creatures entering the battlefield to trigger all our Soul Sister effects, but because they also count as their own life gain sources, they represent a cascade sequence of life gain triggers on future turns as well. 
In this slot, we're also playing Sicardus Splendor, Well of Lost Dreams, and Mangara the Diplomat. Turns 5 and beyond, we'll need to start thinking about interaction. We'll play Pest Infestation, Noxious Grasp, and Sanctify to detonate our opponent's key pieces. With the leftover mana, we can deploy Kambal, Consul of Allocation, Life Gift, and Sun Droplet for more life gain, and in the case of the Droplet, Damage Prevention. We can also play out Pristine Talisman, Tainted Sigil, or Parasitic Impetus, while having enough mana left over to protect our board investment, which is extensive at this point, with cards like Eerie Interlude, Lazel's Acrobatics, and Semester's End, all of which will blink out our creatures and have them re-enter to get more triggers from cards like Daxos and Soul Warden. In light of our board protection, we can wipe the board using Righteous Fury and the Meat Hook Massacre at a time when it's most convenient for us, ideally after blinking out our creatures. The really cool thing about this deck is how many ways it has to close things out. In addition to working up to firing off Bilbo's ability, we can also land either of our two alternate win cons as paths to victory. The Exquisite Blood and Veto combo is also a very snug inclusion as well, as is, of course, the infamous Aetherflux Reservoir, which doesn't even have to win as much as it has to hold the table hostage long enough for you to snag the win. But one of the silliest ways to celebrate Bilbo's birthday is with March of the Multitudes. Since they're all creatures entering the battlefield and all have lifelink, we'll power up Bilbo in no time at all and be ready to blow out the candles. This deck is, to be frank, exactly what life gain strategies needed. One pitfall those decks usually fall into is that life gain is really all that they're doing. But when life gain is itself really not that strong a strategy, Bilbo provides a finish line and a win con for your life gain in the command zone. And what's more, his identity is all three life gain colors. In the same ways that commanders like Feather and Osgear have changed the landscape of what Boros can do in commander, I feel like Bilbo has changed the game for these life gain strategies and has secured my pick for the premier commander if you are wanting to run a life gain deck. The only real weakness of the deck, if it can be said to have one, is card draw. Normally, in these colors, we'd be leaning on green and black for our card draw, but our creatures are not big enough for most green card draw spells to be very effective, and most black card draw is going to cost us life, which we really don't want to be doing. We have enough life gain effects to be able to play a few of these effects without losing too much momentum, but in general, we should be staying away from these effects as much as possible so long as we don't run out of gas. Special thanks to all my patrons on Patreon. When I started this channel, I wanted to provide insight into deck building decisions with my videos. In practice, what often happens is I talk for 30 minutes about every little nuance of a deck, which is longer than I'm comfortable with posting to YouTube, so a lot of that discussion gets cut for time. Here, patrons can find extended discussions on their favorite decks, in-depth guides on complex game actions, request priority deck techs, and more. So if you enjoy this content, consider becoming a patron today. One of the things my patrons have made possible is a special series of deck decks that I'm really excited to show off to you guys. When I finally get them all uploaded, I'll be giving away a special collection of altars and tokens that I've made, corresponding to each deck on the channel. For example, for the Merkle Lord of Bones deck, the prize is a set of double-faced altars of the most prominent cards in the deck, whose backsides are set in the constellation frame with updated text to show that they're acting as enchantments now. For every thousand views on each video, I'll increase the prize pool for that deck. All you have to do to be eligible to win is be subscribed to the channel. If you like this video, the next decks I'll be looking at can be found here in no particular order, so if you see something you like, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss them, and check out the playlist in the top left for more. Thanks for watching!